Welcome to All Hands on Tech Live. I'm Jeremy Morgan. I'm your host today. I'm your Tuesday host. And today we're building a JavaScript game. So we're still working on our game Totally Awesome is the name of it. And it is our JavaScript game that we've been working on for a few streams now. And today we're going to uh, jump right into it. We're going to build some cool stuff. Today we're going to make it kind of like a real game, right? So let me get my chat loaded up here. Make sure that that is here. Feel free to ask me any questions in chat that you might have. So anything pertaining to JavaScript, to whatever. Whatever you want to ask questions about. If I don't know the answer, Google probably does. Chat GPT probably does. But you could uh, definitely ask me and we will, uh, we will attempt to answer that. Hello, Surly Dev. Twitch chat probably is the best chat. Um, I monitor, when I'm doing this stream, I monitor the Twitch chat and the restream chat um, kind of at the same time, but uh, probably Twitch chat's the best. Because that's where the cool people hang out, right? So, we are going to go in here and get pull, pull down the latest. Um, actually, I should post a link here. I, I don't have the link handy, but I'm going to post the link to the source code if you want to download this and start playing around with it. Um, it is totally available on GitHub, and I, I commit after every stream. So here we go. I'll drop a link. Your audio is a bit low. Can you adjust the mic? Yes, I can, sir. Uh, how's that? Does that sound a little bit better? I have noticed that I have to adjust my mic when I go on to uh, Zoom. It's too loud, so I turn it down, and yeah, then it might not be loud on here. How does it sound now? Uh, I will post this here. What we're working on. There we go. There's the GitHub. For what we're working on today. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to make a game over screen. Um, we made it. We started a game over screen last week, actually. So let's let's just run the game really quick and see where we're at. We'll run serve here. Return four oh four because I ran serve from the wrong location. So something important to note, if you do decide to uh, pull down this repo and run it, everything is in the source directory, SRC. So that's where you want to run NPM from or whatever serve you're using. I'm using uh, NPM serve. But whatever serve program you're using, got to go in the source code or source directory. There we go. Here's our, our little game. Do, 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 do. I think I need to put more platforms in here, but and then when we this is where we left off last week when we get hit we get a game over screen. However, one of the first pieces of feedback that I got in my messages is hey, how about a reset button, right? Cuz you go here and well, you have to reload the screen. So that was one of the first things was how about a reset button? Uh reset button's pretty easy to put in. We will put that in. Uh, but like I said, I want to put in some more platforms today. So I'm going off my stream schedule. I scheduled the uh, the game over screen thing. We're going to do a start screen, but I, I want to put in some more tiles here really quick. So open file or project. Go in here to repos. We are, my repos are full. Yikes, this is a big folder. Uh, totally awesome project files, and I believe it's terrain. Yeah, it's this one, this project. This should open up. And that looks entirely different from what we have. This looks like an old one, actually. So 
So let's see. Project files. I hope I saved those. Otherwise, we might be in trouble. Terrain TMX. Some files could not be found. Totally awesome. Assets, tile set image. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it, maybe I screwed up on this because this is an old map that we used, uh, old sprite map we used from before. Error occurred. Oh, that's there's a session. Oh, unrecognized. Hmm. Terrain TMX appears to be an old version. That's unfortunate. However, we can open a file. We can go in here to our source. Assets. I think we can open terrain JSON. There we go. That's that's our platforms and our ground layer. Now it's missing terrain PNG, but we will open that tile set in here. Because I believe, oh yeah, we did call it terrain PNG. So that should, should work. And I believe this is 16 by 16. There we go. Okay, now we're, we're back in business. Even though access is denied because I have serve running. Let's shut that down. Save this. Here's our terrain JSON. Now we can save the project. And hopefully we won't have that problem again. I say hopefully. I don't really know. So we will put in some different platforms here for our player to jump on. I kind of like these little bricks. These bricks are awesome too. We'll uh, we'll add a few more of these here. Actually, we don't. We want enough space that the player can jump through it. And one thing that I do want to do is build some custom like weird stuff, like. One of the things I think of is like when you're playing those old 8-bit video games. So we're trying to make this kind of like an old 8-bit video game. I would say if you look at the graphics of this, this is like late 80s, early 90s PC and computer games. I'd say probably early 90s. Kind of sticking with that, I want to put in some of the mechanics from those games back then. And one of the things I'd like to put in here that we probably won't do in this stream because we, we want to do our game over screen and our start screen. But one of the things I want to do in this game is uh, put a little bouncy thing like where you run and it bounces you off into somewhere and screws you all up. That is one of the things I want to do and I'm going to text my wife really quick. You should never ignore your spouse, even if you're on a live stream. <laughs> it's just one of those rules, you know, that you just don't do. Okay. So now we're going to put this here, put this here. Oops, not that. Now we have a, at least a pathway to get up there. And we could even put something here. Whatever. We're going to save our terrain.json. We're going to export it as JSON. We're going to export it right there to terrain.json. Yes, we want to replace it. Now let's see what our screen looks like. Go back to our screen. Refresh. There we go. Now we have a bunch of different platforms to jump on. There's our game over. So let's fix this game over screen. Let's make the game over uh, screen just have a reset button. We can go in, so we did a lot of refactoring on, on the last couple of streams. We've refactored this, and one of the things I said is 
is after we put in all of this work, putting it into classes and things like that, that modifications will be easier. So I'm hoping that things will be easier uh, after I said that, right? <laughs> after we refactor it, we should be able to make uh, modifications pretty easily. So this is my create screen here. And we're gonna drop in another function. We're gonna call it reset game. And this one is to reset game. We're gonna say this, the autocorrect almost got it right. This scene start, except we don't want title scene. We want it to start our game scene, which as we know is named right here, game scene. So we just wanna put in a function here that starts the game scene over again. Now, if we call this function, it should just pop us back into that game screen and restart. However, we want to put a button of some type in there. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that in a preload. So if you remember, we have preload, create, and update for each of these. Um, this one doesn't have an update yet because it just basically displays a screen. And a quick check, check really quick, just to make sure we are on. Yes, it appears we are on on the streams that we want to be on. So it's cool. All right. Getting a little faster with the tech checks. So I got wild windows over here and yeah. So preload. In preload, we need to put uh, an image. This load image. We don't have an image to load yet, but we're gonna name this reset button. And we'll say assets, reset button PNG sounds good to me. So we'll just go with the autocomplete. We need to create a reset button. How can we do that? Uh, there is a like JPEG button generator, it's like, clickminded.com, I believe. Has this JPEG button generator. Um, there it is. So we're just gonna do just a basic button for now. Or we could, we could draw one, I guess. We'll just draw our own original button. I got Photoshop open here. New file, how big do we want this button to be? Say maybe 400 by 100, that should be fine. Uh, background, I want it to be transparent. Let's create. Since we have our, our font for Totally Awesome, and I haven't really discussed this a lot, but I chose a font that's it's named Frog something. Uh, we'll find out here in a minute. But I kind of want to use that font and start branding this game so that when you see these things, you know, this font and this look and this style, you'll instantly recognize it. So what color do we want this button? Well, we'll make it red, just as red as red gets. And we'll draw a little shape in here. Now, I am not a Photoshop expert. However, I play one on TV. And uh, I think I can do a rounded rectangle for this, right? I think we'll go into this corner, go to here. Kind of bring it in a little bit on each side. I think that'll work. Oh, I wanted it to be rounded. So there's a stroke. We can do a stroke on it. Not that important because it's on a black background, but if we put it on something other than a black background, that stroke may come in handy. And then we want to round the corners a little bit. 10 pixels, is that enough rounding? And do I need to do that on create? I didn't think I needed to do that on create. Could just be that I'm doing this completely wrong. Get back out of this, let's get rid of this shape. You're gone. Shape, stroke. 10 pixels, yeah, there we go. 
And I think 10 pixels is probably a pretty good rounding number. So I'm gonna go from this corner here down to this corner here and then just attempt to make this button like that. Then we're gonna drop in reset game. Gotta change this color to white. And there's my coder's crux. That's one of my favorite fonts. So I don't know if I should use this one or use the uh, toad font that I was just talking about earlier. Let's find a good size. 48 looks pretty good. Reset the game. Let's see what it looks like with the toad font. Uh, yeah, it's called Frog Toad. Uh, I think that looks better. Reset the game. Let's see if we can put a little drop shadow on it just to, so it doesn't bleed out totally. We'll put a, let's see, 45. Bring in that distance, bring in that size. I wanna make a very small drop shadow. Like that, that's what I'm looking for. Something pretty small and subtle, not a, not a total drop shadow that makes it look like it's raised up, but just something to kind of give it a little definition so you can see it. So this is going to be, this reset the game, this is going to be our reset button for now. We might do something cooler than that. And what did we name this? We named it reset button PNG. So we'll say reset button PNG, save it. We'll go back to here. Now we're loading this image in here for the button reset. So now we need to create the actual reset button. And of course we do that in the create method. So this is our game over text which will probably change that as well. We can make that a little bit different. Um, this was just kind of something that I dropped in here for now. So now we need to make our reset button. Reset button. Look at that, we've got some auto, auto complete here. This add image, 400, 400 for now. We'll, we'll adjust that for sure. Um, its name is gonna be reset button. There's our set interactive. So our autocomplete actually completed this for us. So we're creating a reset button. We're just adding an image to the screen that says set interactive. Now when it's set interactive, that means, here we go, reset button dot on. So we've added an image and then on means when you're clicking on it. What happens when we click on it? And then on here, you can call a method. So we can call reset game. Um, I will do this a little bit different. This reset game. Actually, this might work. I was going to do an anonymous function, but I don't think I need to. Let's find out. Only one way to find out. Sorry, button generator. We ended up not using you. So I'm going to go find one of these enemies. There we go. And our reset button is not loading, however it works. So I did not need to do that anonymous function call that I thought I needed to do. However, we need to figure out why it's not loading. This add image. Four hundred by four hundred reset button. Let's look in our console log here. Load resource, 404, not found. Assets, oh, I, assets, buttons, it's assets. Uh, just assets. There we go, now it should work. Go over here, get hit by an enemy. There we go, game over, reset the game. And the game resets. See, it's starting to become like a real actual game. So 
So how can we load something other than the text that we have? That text looks ugly. Let's think about this for a minute. I don't really want it to load the text. Kind of want to create a screen and have that screen come up and have it say game over. So let's create a transparent image that says game over in big letters. We'll use the same font here. And yeah, we can do that. We'll this load image. The next image is going to be game over. Game over PNG. What is game over PNG going to look like? It's going to look similar to this. New, let's say 500 pixels by 200 maybe. Background, we want that to be transparent again. Yeah, I think we could, I think we could do this. Now, one of the things I do, here's a little trick that I do in, in Photoshop. So if you're a uh, game developer, you gotta get good at Photoshop. Like I said, I'm not a Photoshop expert, but I can, I can make my way around. One thing I like to do is put in a fill layer in here of like black is a good fill layer, especially if our background's black. And then you can draw your image and then you just delete that layer when you go to do transparency. It makes it a little easier because sometimes it is hard to kind of visualize what things will actually look like when you have a transparent image that's gonna be overlaid over something else. It can be a little tricky sometimes. So we're gonna do game, probably like game over like this. Let's make these just huge. And here we want that to be auto. Hmm, I don't think I want it to be two layers actually, or two rows, two columns, whatever. I think I do want to do like this. Game over. Make it striking and loud. We want to make this red. Something like this, and then maybe a white stroke. Stroke, about like that. So this is what it's actually going to look like on the screen. And let's crop it a little bit because we don't want to. Uh, we don't want to have extra space that we don't need. So if we crop this thing just as close as we can, then that that saves us a little bit of memory. So that looks pretty good. Actually, I want. I want it to be just a little bit bigger. So we'll make this font a little bit bigger. 72, how about 82? Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. Game over. Now I want to do the crop. I'll crop this down so that we're kind of saving, like I said, saving memory is important. Now it's cropped in. Now we can turn that layer off and there's our game over. Save as on your computer. Um, I'm gonna create some, actually we'll just create the PSDs inside the, uh, the game. So totally awesome. Project files. PSDs, I wanna make this completely, uh, so in our PSD, we'll say game over PSD. There, now when you download the uh, the newest version of that repo, you will have the PSDs so that you can modify this and make it however the heck you want. Now we'll do our quick export as PNG. This one is game over PNG, like this. Save, we'll go back here. Now we should have, there we go, we have game over PNG and we're loading it here. So, instead of game over text, which is what we had before, we had that really ugly, terrible looking text. And I realized that this entire game looks like a game from the 90s.
but we don't want it to look like a game from the 70s. So game over, let's see, const, game over image, instead of game over text, equals this add image, game over. Then we can say game over image, set origin, We'll do the same thing here. There we go. We'll just use the same, pretty much the same code. Except now we should have a game over image. I don't know exactly where it's gonna land, so we might have to play around with that a little bit. I forgot to put it in assets, didn't I? No? Oh, here we go. So let's be, what, what is the reasoning? Set origin is not defined. Why would set origin be not defined? Oh, it would help if I put a period in there instead of a slash, right? And still not seeing the image. Game over, reset the game. That's great. <laughs> we don't have an image. So copy the path. Assets, game over PNG. Uh, I don't think there's any other way that I could do this. That would make sense. Oh, I called it reset button. This is game over image. That's why I tried to load the reset button twice. You cannot do that. Game over image. There we go. Now, now it should load the image and the reset button. And we're going to have to position it around a little bit. Theoretically, the image is right where the text was, but yeah, that's not bad. It's not, not bad. We'll just bring it up a little bit is what we're going to do. So I believe this should bring it up a little bit. Reset. There we go. I brought it up. Game over. Reset the game. So we have an actual game over screen that doesn't look like garbage. And then we have a reset the game. Cool, right? Now we need to do a start screen. We need to do like a, just a start screen that enables us to start. Oops. So that's gonna be the next part. On my notes here, I said create a start scene as a part of this. Can we do it within the hour? Probably. We can probably do it within the hour. We shall find out. And I'm gonna check something here really quick. Okay, yeah. If anybody in chat has questions, feel free to throw them my way. Um, are we actually? Yes, we are streaming on LinkedIn. Perfect. Feel free to throw me any questions or heckle me or whatever. Um, if I do something wrong or dumb and you know stuff about JavaScript or, or uh, Phaser, feel free to drop that as well. So we're gonna create something called an opening scene, right? So every video game has an opening scene. Obviously you don't turn it on and then it just starts playing. You've gotta have some kind of opening scene. That's what we're gonna do today. And we're gonna name this creatively OpenScene.js. Now this is going to look pretty familiar to folks because we're going to just create another class that looks pretty much like all of the other classes. So we're gonna say opening scene here. It's going to extend the phaser scene. 
Since we have that, we're going to need a constructor. There we go. Super key opening scene. Just like pretty much everything else. We have our preload. We have our create. Uh, we're just going to use a create for now. And in our create, we need to uh, put in some elements for an opening scene. So we did add text before. So we could do that really quick just to just to kind of try it out, basically. This, add text. Um, text is going to be, I don't know, 400, 100, something like that. And then we're going to say 400, 400. What's it going to say? Welcome. Or we could say totally awesome. Totally awesome. Uh, that font size is fine for now. And number. Oh yeah, we have to do a set origin. This add text. Set origin. Maybe I'm wrong. Set origin 0 0.5, 0 0.5, okay. Get rid of that. So I think, let's just see if we can add this in and we need to, of course, go into our index HTML. Right after phaser, we're gonna put in opening scene.js which is what I named it, right? Or open scene, I don't know. Yeah, I, I named it open scene, so. Open scene.js, we'll take this. Our class is opening scene, so we should probably rename this to opening scene, just for consistency's sake. And then of course go back here and say opening scene.js. And we're gonna load that in, and then in our app JS or our game JS, I mean, it is kind of like an app JS. We need to put in opening scene in here. Add that scene in. Now we reset. There we go. We have a screen, but it does not have the text on it. So back to our opening scene. Uh, I'm going to copy some other stuff. Add text. Let me look at this really quick. Fill. I'm going to make this super white. See if that helps. So we have font size. Let's look at the notes here. Welcome to the game. Totally awesome. Then we do our font size and our fill. So this should be everything we need here, except it's set origin 0.5. Oh well, we're gonna put in an image anyway. <laughs> but uh, I was gonna try to put in some text. That doesn't appear to work. Create. All right. I will copy in some stuff I have from my notes here. And I'll just copy it in completely. This is one that I used on a different game project. And at least we see, welcome to my game here. Okay, perfect. Now I wanna put in a background image. And for that, I generated something with AI that's kind of cool that I wanna use for a background image. Now we know we have an 800 by 640. So that's something that we need to remember is our screen is 800 by 640. So I'm gonna go in here into, where did I put that? Oh, there it is in phaser. Check that out. I had uh, Dolly generate an image of a ninja frog that's pixelated. 
kind of looks uh, kind of looks cool, right? Looks looks doable. If anything, so we're gonna make this 800 px by 640 px. Try to find a good like how about right there. And then I'll export as PNG. We're going to call this title screen. We'll copy that. This is going to be our title screen for this game. So in our opening scene, we're going to do a preload. It's going to be very similar to what we've done before with preload. Um, and, and in fact, we can just steal some code, right? So we want this to be title screen. Let's go back to our game over scene. And just steal this. Because we like to save time. This is going to be title screen. Assets, title screen. Asset button, title screen. Okay, now we've got the image loaded up. So for the background, we should be able to put title screen and we should see this. There it is. There's our totally awesome title screen. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I like phaser so much. I think phaser is pretty, pretty awesome. Like, uh, there's just not a lot. Once you get the hang of things, there's just not a lot of hard coding incredible work that you have to do so we need a totally awesome header up here let's do that really quick let's and we'll take game over psd and we'll just change it a little bit we'll say totally awesome pull that down to a smaller font size preferably So totally awesome. And this I want to make green instead of red. Again, we're we'll get this all centered up. Green seems like a pretty obvious choice. We'll do some bright green. Let's crop this up a little bit. There we go. Oh, this made 800 by 640. I don't think I wanted to do that. Uh, redo that one. I'll just cheat it again. So now we're going to have this bright green thing on our title screen. Now I do want to crop. However, I don't want any of that resolution to be set for me. Crop this. Enter. There we go. And we'll just save as. For this one, it's going to be a title logo. You know. Export the PNG. Title logo PNG. Save that. And we'll go in here. That's going to be the next one to load. So we're going to call this title logo, title logo PNG. And we're going to load in a logo. So instead of welcome to my game, we don't want that. We want a title logo. Uh, copy that. 
So for the set origin, we have it as zero, zero now, which is gonna put it right up in that top corner, but we want something like, let's start with the 400, 300 stuff and see where, where that goes. Uh, it's not drawing. Why is it not drawing? This add image. Uh, maybe this is where I need to do this also. Where, oh, where is our title logo? Image. We'll just add it in the same spot and kind of adjust it from there. There we go, there's our totally awesome. Now we need to move it kind of up and over, around in a different spot. Do that here, we'll say what's, what happens when we change this to 300? Moves it over a little bit. So for our starting, we could put uh, 600. Since it's almost as wide as the screen, Ah, we need less, less of that. Okay. Just trying to figure out which coordinate I'm on here. So for this, in order to center it, we need to figure out how wide this is for one. Image size, we're 500 pixels wide. So how can we get it to center on the screen if it's 500 pixels wide. We're gonna have to, if our screen is 600 wide, we need to put 50 on each side. So, fifty. Yeah, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's 800. And, oh yeah, it's 800. 800 wide. So. 150 will center it. There we go. Now we're centered. And it's 600 tall. So let's say 200. Or maybe 150 here also. This might bring it back up to where we want it to be. There we go. Now this is one that I probably should have made two different layers and now that i'm looking at the green uh, i'm not really sure if the green works it is kind of hard to see in there uh, in this particular background but let's change the image a little bit just to make it two rows and take this image size here let's say 200 We know we're 860 wide, right? So we could just do 860, 200. Actually, I'm just gonna start this all over again rather than try to resize it. So this is our actual screen. Let's do a copy of approximately where we want this to be. We want it to be right about here. Copy. We'll do new from clipboard, which is 800 by 277. Now we'll drop in our totally awesome. And here, we'll make this font really big. Totally awesome, all right. And then we kind of got to think about the colors a little bit here. So with these colors, I don't know if green's the best choice. We're gonna go with it for now, but this might change soon. We're gonna put the stroke back on it that we had before. And then we're gonna do some crop magic like I said, to save memory, save space, we're gonna do some crop magic. Because 
we don't want anything that's extra on those outsides. Like if you go around the image, anything that's extra with that transparency stuff um, is just extra memory that we're not using for any reason. So now we've got a much bigger logo. Put it on here. It's probably going to cover the frogs. We need to up it a little bit, but this is just a much bigger, better logo in my opinion. Totally awesome. Let's put that at 50. There we go. I like the logo there. However, it still seems to be blending in pretty seriously with the background right now. What can we do about that? Well, we could take this and we could tone it down a little bit. All right, just an, I just used an AI generated image and some of the stuff I don't like anyway, like I don't really like that, but that's fine. Let's just, uh, we'll dim that just a little bit. So we'll go all the way around our toad here. That didn't really work. Actually, let's do magnetic lasso so that we're, we're pretty exact about it. Feels intricate. Even though this is a uh, pixel art, we do want to try to make it as accurate as possible. So this, I'm gonna take this, we're gonna copy it here. I'm gonna say copy and paste. And underneath here, we wanna maintain that selection, but underneath here, we're gonna delete this. Fill color should be this. We're gonna say fill color. There we go, now we've, we've completely gotten rid of that. We go in here, we'll just pull the fill down a little bit. You can see we just faded it just a little bit so that we can see our image better. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it, but I just want to see what it looks like. And that was kind of bothering me about the other one too. So now we'll do quick export as PNG, title screen. There we go. Now it pops a little bit more. Um, I'm not a designer by any means. I am a programmer. That is what I do. However, I've learned enough design over the years copying people that I probably figure it out. And I seem to be pretty good with Photoshop because I've used it so much over the years, especially as like a web developer. You have to know Photoshop. I'm gonna go to this background, we're gonna fill. This is just a little, uh, little attention to detail here. Export as PNG, title screen. All right. Now we have a title screen. This title screen looks pretty cool, right? Um, but how do we enter? Like we need to enter the game somehow. I didn't leave a lot of room on here for a button, but I guess we could put a little start button right here. And we can draw it in this image so that we can see exactly what it's going to look like by just creating another layer on this image. And we're gonna do another shape. Probably not gonna be 10 pixel rounded this time. Probably more like three maybe. And let's, let's do a start game button right about here. Our color, fill color is to be red. So it's very noticeable. Press enter. And here. Uh, let's put some 
text on it. Start. Because obviously we need a start button to start the game, right? There's, there's no getting around that. Now this one, I don't so much like the text or the text. I don't like the stroke, so I think I'm going to take the stroke off. And the rounding, I like it to be a little more like five, maybe. There we go. I think that looks a little bit better. Still going to do a fill color, a bright red. And then our text is going to be white with a tiny bit of drop shadow. Again, a tiny little bit of drop shadow. Maybe one is about as good as I can get, right? I don't even know if you can put floats in here. No, you cannot put floats in here. So one is what it's going to be. So we're going to do that. We're also going to select this and put a little drop shadow on this. And we will likely animate these at some point. Not today, because we're almost at the top of the hour. Here's drop shadow. Okay, okay, cool. Now, what can I do with this? Well, I can take this and this, copy it, and then do new from clipboard, create, just paste it in here. Now we have a button that looks like I do need to, to move it just a tiny bit. And there's our button. So of course, this one I'm going to save as on my computer. I'm going to save this as start button. This way you can come in and, and do whatever you want to modify this thing. Like you could come in and say, oh, I want to do a different color or I want to do a different effect. You know, like we could do inner shadow might make this look kind of cool. Might like see, inner glow. Might be something inner shadow. Thinking maybe. Yeah, it doesn't really look that great. Bevel and emboss. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. So we'll we'll go with that. Bevel and emboss. And again, we're going to save and then export as a PNG. Start button PNG. Perfect. Now, in here, yeah, set interactive is what I'm looking for. Okay. So in here, now we have our start button. Center assets, start button PNG, you know the drill. We're going to say start button. Start button PNG. So now we're loading in that image. We can load this and say 450 maybe for this one. Let's see where it puts our start button. Oh, I'm silly. There's our start button. So we just need to kind of move it around. Uh, 550 might be better. 575. Okay. 570. Let's try that. Almost there. Almost there. 580. Yeah, I think that's probably a little better. And then for here, 250. Where does that put us? That puts us closer. 350. A little too far. 320. And there we go. 
That's where I want the start button to be. Actually, maybe just a just a tad bit lower. It's almost touching his feet. I don't really want it to touch his feet. Okay, there we go. So there's our start button. I mean, I could either put it there or I could put it above his head. Actually, I think I'll put it above his head because down there is just too not good. So for our title logo, I think we had that at 50. Maybe we could try 20. So we move that title logo up a little bit. Oh, perfect. So now we have the title logo up here. Let's put the start button above his head. So I think I'm gonna go even higher here, 115. And for this one, 285 is just my guess. Yeah, we're pretty close. We're pretty close. 265. Move it up 20 pixels. Yeah, almost there. 255. Yeah, it's getting close. <laughs> uh, 45. There we go, there's a good start button. I don't know why it doesn't look centered to me, but I think this will work. So, now do we just need to add in the code to start from there. So, I'm gonna move it over a little bit because it just doesn't look on center to me. That looks a little bit better. Okay, so now we need to add some code to the start button so that it will start up our scene. This is also in the create section. So we need to create a start button and we can rob code from other places, but um, we've got the image added. This add image start button. I think const, actually, here's how we'll do this. Start button, and then here we'll just, we'll call this, this image that we're preloading here, this add image. Start button, set origin. Okay, image still loading. Then we can say start button, set interactive. Huh? So now it's now it's a thing. Now it's not just an image place there. It's an interactive thing that we can select. And we can say when the pointer's down. Look at that. Autocomplete actually took care of us. So now we can say start button on, pointer down. So when you're clicking it, then it creates an anonymous function that calls this scene start game scene. Which is that our is that our scene name? Yes, it is. It's game scene. So this should work. Let's try it out. Okay. So click the button. There we go. Now our game starts. Da -da 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 -da. Game over. Uh, reset the game. And you'll notice that reset the game does not uh, start us at the start screen. We don't want it to start at the start screen. We want it to start at the game screen. We only want the start screen to come up when people are first starting up their the game for the first time. After that, they don't really care, right? So, as we're doing it, restart, start it. Da -da 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 -da. Game over. For game over, I also want to load in the screen. The, the screen that we're using in the start screen, I want to use in the game over. So for our opening screen, we have this, uh, where is it? Title screen. Let's take this and put it in our game over scene. So in game over, we're doing uh, preloads of the image. We don't really need to. You could actually do this in the create like we did in the first one. I just noticed that, that there's a little inconsistency there. So I preload in this one. I didn't preload in the first screen, but as you can see, it's, it's pretty much this exactly the same. 
But in game over scene, I want to preload this title screen. And then we'll go back to where is it opening scene? And we're going to this add image. We're just going to put this in the background in our create. So we've got this add image. Now let's see what that game over screen looks like. We start our game. Dun, da, 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 da. Oof, game over. There we go. Now we have that start screen again. However, I wonder if there's a way. I'm going to Google it really quick. To Maybe I don't even need to Google it. Game over scene. Let's see if we can say const background equals this add image. And or we do that in create. Yeah, we'll do that in create. Background. Looks like set interactive. How to darken an image in phaser. This guy just want to make it a little bit darker or a little Yeah, just like darker and faded. So this add image. Image.set tint. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to say background set tint. And this sets the tint to zero, which I don't know. Try setting the tint to 10. And this might just be a dumb thing that I don't need to do. Uh, 10, uh, I can barely see it. Set tint to 90. I just want this to be a little bit, little bit faded, like kind of washed out even. Uh, it's kind of close, but yeah, that's, that's a weird tint. So we'll just do that next week. We'll work on something like that next week. For today, this is what I wanted to accomplish in the stream. We just went over just a tiny bit, but I wanted to accomplish getting a start screen with a start button and then a game over scene. And now that I look at it, I don't like where the toad is starting. Look, he's halfway off the screen. Can we fix that? I think we can. In our game scene, we're looking at our dude, All right? Where do we place the dude for the first time? We set the background image, add the ground, player. Where do we drop in the player? 32, 384. What happens when it's 132? Let's start. There we go. So it doesn't have to be 132, but it needs to be more than 32, right? Like maybe uh, 64. Start. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Da -da -da -da. Reset the game. Oh, and when I reset, that's interesting. When I reset, it goes back to that weird spot here. Well, we're going to have to figure that out next week. Anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Uh, all the people on Twitch, LinkedIn Live, YouTube, all that. Thank you for watching. So today, just to kind of go through what we accomplished today is, and I'm going to commit all this code to the GitHub again what we accomplished today we made a start screen where you can click start 
we fix the game over screen so that there's a reset on the game over that drops you back into the game. So this is what I wanted to accomplish today. We, uh, we improved a scene, then we added a scene. Um, very cool stuff, very fun. We're gonna keep working on this game. This is gonna be a real game that's really cool. So I will, uh, let's see. I'm gonna pop a couple links in here for folks. And Matthias decided to join today. Hello, Matthias. Yes, there are always more bugs. Always. So in the chat, I'm going to drop, here's playable version of the game. And this is not updated with today's, but every week when I do the stream, I commit the code and then I upload it to itch.io. So on itch.io, there's a playable version of the game. I'm gonna upload this just right after the stream and I'm gonna commit the code. The code again, I will drop another link for that. I commit this after every stream so that you can download this game and start to play around with it and yeah. And if you want to fork the game on GitHub, like if you, uh, actually it has been forked by one of our viewers. I, I'm not really sure what he's done on it yet, but if you want to fork this game and do some modifications and stuff, then we can take a look at it here on stream. We can, uh, we can pull it into changes, stuff like that, and we can make it kind of a community collaborative effort. That would be really cool. Uh, it does definitely doesn't have to be just, uh, my changes and stuff. So I will see you next week the same time next Tuesday we'll be back on here we'll do some more stuff on Thursday my friend David Neal does a stream that's really cool uh, he even knows more about JavaScript than I do so you know that's pretty handy he's also making a JavaScript game so if you're watching this and you like this be sure to subscribe uh, follow us on Twitch always 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 on Twitch and sometimes on the other one also we're giving out stickers so if you're a watcher of this stream, send me a message on Twitch, whisper out uh, and say, I want some laptop stickers. These are cool stickers um, that were designed by David Neal, the person that does the stream on Thursday. And I've sent these out internationally even, so don't be afraid if you're not in the United States. Uh, so far I've been able to send it to other countries. So yeah, thanks for, uh, Thanks for joining me, and we will see you next week. I'm going to find someone on Twitch to raid for our uh, Twitch stream. So we're going to find someone cool here really quick to, to raid. Oh, and Matthias has a question before we go. Something I was wondering, since PNG is so good at lossless compression, I don't think cropping will save that much data in the file. <laughs> I guess there might be a bit more for the browser. Uh, you're probably right. Uh, with the... With the compression, it probably does just remove all of that extra transparency stuff. Um, I've just always assumed that that wasn't the case. But you might be right. We're going to look it up. We're going to ask ChatGPT <laughs> or something. We'll look it up and, and find out uh, whether or not cropping does make any difference. All right. Let's see who is online. Our friend Thindle. So this is why Thindle wasn't on the stream today, is because Thindle is streaming his own yep. stuff. So we're going to raid Mr. Thindle on Twitch. And again, thank you everybody for joining, and I'll see you next week. Hi, how are you, Lifeguardians?